freaking first cut. Golly! Welcome to the First Cut Podcast. I'm Rick Gaiman, and this is your round four recap for this week's PGA Championship. And joining me to break it all down, Greg Ducharme is here. Greg, what up? What's going on, boys? Uh, man, that uh, that was a lot to take in. What a week. Um, and what a day today. Quite interesting. It was uh, very enjoyable to watch, I guess is the best way to say it. Rounding out it was, our group four. It was unbelievable. I was going to bring in Yeah. Sorry. I was going to introduce yeah, it, it really was. Voice. It was unbelievable. I'm fired <laughs> up. My name's Kyle Porter. This is the First Cut <laughs> Podcast. Uh, I mean... Did you not get emotional watching 18 today? I can't. When he did the, I, I when he did the double fist pump, oh, it was it was cool. I mean, I got, I, he, I, he, I got more emotional. Phil is rarely speechless, uh, and some of his you know post round interviews when he went into I don't know if it was the press center or whatever. I mean, he seemed not speechless, but very much in thought. It was very moving for him. It it was it was cool. It seemed very surreal. Here, here was my column and my pr- kind of primary take. And maybe this is a weird take because it was such a historic win. I thought it was so fitting that this is really the first kind of real tournament where we've had a ton of people back. And yes. for it to be Phil, who's kind of like the people's champ, right? Which is dumb because he drinks $40,000 bottles of wine out of the claret jug. But he's not, he's not like the common man but tiger made him seem like he was i think in a lot of ways right. and i thought it was so fitting that he won this one which is honestly it's the first tournament where we've had real like kind of fans back since the 2019 open right port rush is that right i think that's right um, well, are you talking well, about a major for, championship? For majors. Yeah. yeah. For majors. Yeah. yeah. For majors. Sorry. Yeah. Yes, yes, yes. For major cha- We kind of had it at Augusta, but it wasn't, it was different. And I felt like that sort of, um, I just, I thought Phil was like the perfect guy for, for that to, and the, and the most improbable guy, but yeah. the perfect guy for that to happen to. And I thought the scene on, on 18, as good as the tiger tour championship one was, I thought this one was more intimate. I really did. It felt like, <laughs> It, it really felt like, hey, we're all – look at that. It felt like, hey, we're all back together again. Right? As cool as as cool as it was, I thought it was an example of how not to do crowd control for a minute there. You got to get you got to get the players through. Then you open it up. You let the guys run up the fairway. But oh, Greg, yeah. It's it was, <laughs> it was a total zoo, but it was it was awesome. So, I mean, th- this, is, this was Phil's opportunity to walk in. I mean, this is what Tiger deals with. Right, he, he dealt with it at the Tour Championship, and this is an extreme level. It, this would be, but but these the kind of interactions where you wonder if a fan is going to injure somebody, <laughs> th- it, that only happens with Tiger, and yeah. it happened with Phil today. And I, I I don't think I've ever seen it before with anybody else. Where I mean, he he literally, I mean, there was almost a, a horse collar tackle, right? This was it got Throw the flag. It, oh, nearly dangerous. Yeah. It was almost 15 yards. Um, it, it, it got dangerous <laughs> for a minute there, but it was, um, it, it was shocking to see. And it meant so much more than Phil Mickelson won a, a major championship to your point, Kyle. This was, um, it, it was pretty cool. Brooks? Is it his best major ever? Oh yeah, of course. I mean, I think it's better that, than the first. The 13 open was awesome. Awesome. And, and it, that one proved, that he could win. Nobody ever thought he could win at an open championship. This would kind of, he's now proved that and he nearly won again after the 13 open, but he's 50 years old and he's basically 51. And nobody's ever done that before. So he could it, be, how me, many, it, how many, it's a little better. He could be a dad to like half the field easily. More probably. More than that. Yeah, definitely more than that. I mean, this, this is, he this be record is dad. Of course. Yeah. Brooks is what? 31. He was and, his yeah, dad I mean, that would be <laughs> Phil's fifty one. So, <laughs> so uh, this the, the obviously we'll get into the rounds. We'll get into Phil. We'll get into Brooks. But like that record now being the oldest man to win a major might last a very long time. I mean, old Tom Morris when he, he his lasted for a hundred years. Uh, who just who did who did he just break? Boros's record. Uh, that yeah, Julius Boros. He was that lasted fifty years, sixty years. I mean, this this could last a long time. Well, think about um, think of how was I just gonna say? 
Uh, I, I have no idea what I was about to say. Go ahead. Well, that's okay. <laughs> Go ahead, Greg. <laughs> could it last a long time? I, I'm, I, I don't know. I'm honestly in this strange place where there's there's a great young um, group of guys on the on tour, and there's a lot of guys that you think are you know ready to win a major, but at the same time, Podrick Harrington came and tied fourth. So careers right now on tour are the 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 prime of your career is getting is happening earlier but it also is extending longer and we're seeing players with much more experience contend later into their career now now phil's an extreme example um coming off of a a major he just won a major champ i mean i didn't think he'd win again on tour he just won a major so yeah but at the same time can somebody can an older guy compete out there yeah i think there's some proof so I, i don't know i'm i'm uh I'm curious about that one. I don't know if it's going to last a long time, but it's um, it's definitely a, a, a high achievement. There, there is a fantastic question in the chat from Daniel and Kyle. It's it's in reference to something you said uh, back when golf came back in the summer. Essentially, that so many major championships, you know, kind of smooshed all together would be an opportunity for one guy to really change their legacy. You could have a guy go out and win two of these, you know, two of the next six in a short period of time. Is Phil's victory this major championship uh, of the majors that we've gotten back? Is is this the biggest? legacy changing win Hideki's was big right yeah. because of the Japan thing and <clears throat> everything that goes along with that and it's the masters uh DJ's was big Oakmont and Augusta is a big deal are there any small ones <laughs> um hold on go go to you Greg I've got I've got something playing on, on my headphones right now go ahead so, so Greg, the the Hideki legacy changer, that's obviously huge. Phil, who already Hall of Famer, already 44 wins on the PGA Tour, already five major championships. Like, how does this change his legacy, adding a sixth at 50 and almost 51 years old? I do think it's kind of a big deal. Um, he elevates himself past a guy like a Seve Ballesteros um, and many others with, well, I mean, not many, but there, but some of the uh, these other great players uh, with with five major championships, and he jumps into the Nick Faldo and Lee Trevino conversation. So now there there are um, twelve guys. He's tied twelfth in the all time major list right now uh, with, yeah. with two other players, right? And if you start to look through the guys who have more majors than him, you you can start to rule out some of these names. And I, I don't know what you guys think about this, but to me. Walter Hagen played so long ago. He has 11, but it it was so, it was such a different game. His major span was 1914 to 1929. You can probably get Varden out of there. Right? Varden's 1896. I almost said 96. (laughs) 1896 to 1914. You have Bobby Jones, who started the Masters, but doesn't have a a master's in there. I know this would get Mark all fired up, but 1923 to 1930. These are all, these happened a long time ago and the game is different. And so when you kind of get into that Arnold Palmer era, you start talking uh, Ben Hogan era, you start talking about the modern game, which is funny to say, because it happened in the forties and fifties, but that's really where I kind of draw the line. So ruling out a uh, Hagen and a Varden, uh, it makes Phil a top 10 player of all time. And then you start yeah. adding in his PGA Tour wins, and it puts him ahead of Faldo. And so he, uh, yeah, this is a this is a huge win for his legacy, uh, and he becomes a, a a top ten all time great, in my opinion. Yeah, I think. Sorry, I'm. I don't know what was going on with my headphones, but uh, I think that honestly, like all, f- what have we had now? Five major, or yeah, five majors played since the uh, yeah. since golf came back. So more no, Morikawa. Uh, winning the PGA Championship, DJ or uh, Bryson winning the U.S. Open, DJ winning the Masters, Hideki winning the Masters, Phil winning the PGA Championship. Is that a good run? It's a great run. How I mean, about that? it's it's so good, and I think that I think that's a really good question because all five have have actually been really meaningful for those guys' careers in different ways. You could make a case that. Weirdly, Morikawa, who's 24, his was the least meaningful. Which is I, crazy. I don't, know if, 
which is which is it, it is crazy because that was that's the one that kind of put him not on the map like everybody knows who Colin Morikawa is but uh, really solidified kind of him as a as a top five guy on on in, in the world and that yeah. that might have been the least meaningful <laughs> oh, of it, all was, it was the least meaningful <laughs> it it's was, amazing. that is the least meaningful which is which is insane I mean think about that so yeah. um you could also make the case that they've gotten progressively more meaningful, which makes me wonder what we're in store for at uh, at Tori, because it went more Kawa than Bryson, DJ, Hideki, and what what could it be? Oh. What what no, what could at Phil, what, Phil at, winning the U.S. Open? Yes, yeah, and completing the career grand slam would be the <laughs> would be the trump card. Yeah, I mean, think like imagine. I was thinking about this all day. Like, first of all, I've got some. I got so much to talk about. We got time. Im- imagine telling yourself on Monday that there would be two guys with f- at least four major wins in the final pairing on Sunday, and neither of them would be Rory. Right? Like, yeah. how would you how would you reconcile that fact? Because there, I think there are only three guys in the field, right, that had four or more. Tiger's not there. Nobody, nobody else. Jordan. He's Jordan three. three. Three, three, yeah. He has, he yeah. has four green jackets, Potter but he has three, three majors. <laughs> it's hard. I know, right? It's really hard. To, my brain doesn't wrap around that. Wow. Yeah, so there's only three guys, and the one that wasn't was Rory. Was at, the favorite. at Right. Wow. It's just the whole week, and I feel like we did this thing. We did it on every single podcast. We did. I did it on every HQ hit, and I think you kind of did too, Rick, of like, in the back of your head, you're like, okay, I need to talk about this in a way as if this isn't really going to happen, right? Yeah. It's not really going to happen because it can't happen. It doesn't happen, right? It, the, the, in round, I don't know, it's round one or round two. I think I got annoyed because people were like, oh, Phil's leading a major. I'm like, do you understand what's happening right now? He's, <laughs> he's, he's 50. He's 143rd in strokes gained over the last six months. He's not good. Like he's objectively a bad golfer and everybody kind of treated it as this pedestrian thing. And I, I hate that that sort of uh, kind of veils what he actually accomplished this week. Um, so, yeah, I, I don't know. It's 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 remarkable. I, I, I still am in shock that it happened. I mean, for, for this year, there was nothing that he was good at. He, he's not good in he's not good in any category. He's 193rd strokes gain off the tee, 131st approaching the green, 158th around the green. It's surprising to most people. 122nd putting. He's, he's 155th in sand, 195th in scrambling. There there is nothing that Phil does. His best asset on the PGA Tour is his driving distance, where he's 50th. Which is kind of interesting for a fifty-one-year-old. How about that? How about that uh, drive he hit on sixteen? Oh my god! Longest drive of the week by any player. Absolute uh, bomb. Three hundred sixty-five, as I think, is what it was officially marked at. Let's kind of go through this round a little bit. Let's start with just the 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 punch and counter punch. So KP, I know you were probably doing HQ hits throughout the day, as I was, basically at the top of every hour, every other hour, and this thing was changing constantly. Uh, to start the round, Phil Mickelson seven under, Brooks Kepka one behind. It took exactly one hole, gentlemen, for that to flip. Then again, after the next hole, flip it again. Then after the third hole, both of them drop a shot. I mean, this was. Uh, I don't. I didn't know if this was like right on brand for for Phil KP. I was, you know, he makes a bogey on one. I'm like, oh, there, here. I was fun, fun while it lasted. Uh, but he was able to right the ship, and and uh, we'll talk about Brooks in a second. But man, this this got us off to just a roaring start. Well, it, it definitely had the feel early of like, ah, uh, this was yeah, this was great. It was really cool, and I hope everybody enjoyed it because. You know, you might shoot 78 today or whatever. Sundays are just very different. You know, I, I think that's the thing. If you've never been to a major, um, it feels like a different sport almost that's happening. It, it's it's very it's very bizarre how different it is. And, you know, I, I thought he did a great job on – when was it? Uh, I can't remember. Between the first and second hole where he was, just, he was like physically trying to like calm himself down, like – pushing his hands down to like calm himself down. I think it might've been after the, uh, I think it might've been right after the first hole. And 
he he did i thought he did such a good job of just like staying in it and staying it would have been so easy to let himself just kind of wander and think about winning and think about all these different things but he stayed in it and uh he i, th- I feel like he kind of fed off the brooks thing maybe a little bit i don't know like i i, I think that brooks you know all this machismo and like his whole his whole persona and feels like wait a second here like you don't have you don't have 44 wins. You don't have five. You're not in this club. You don't have five majors. So I, I think you, I think you actually, I think that stuff kind of actually helps us focus sometimes. The, the first salvo Greg, or the first real one was when he holes out from a Sandy area on the side of five. And that's when I was like, okay, now, now we've got ourselves a little Phil magic. This is an opportunity where he can now uh, put a little pressure on. And that's when he opens up a two shot lead and, and two shots with Phil never feels great. Three shots never feels great. Five doesn't always feel great, but that was the moment I thought, okay, he's not just going to go away and fade into the darkness here. Well, most of the time, that may be an unfair statement, but often major champions have a signature moment, right? There's a, there's a time in a tournament when they hit a shot. Sometimes like the last PGA, you get two where Morikawa chips in on 14 and then hits the shot on 16 and tops it. And you have this moment when it happens really early in a tournament. Um, you wonder if, if it really is the moment or if it's going to last. And there's just the, this constant, uh, thought that Brooks Kepka was going to find his way and he was going to outlast Phil. And the shot that Brooks hit into five was so good with the three iron. And I, I kind of had thought, okay, Brooks is, <laughs> he's here to play today when he hit that shot. This is, he's settled down now. And I, and I think the shot that Phil hold really threw Brooks off at that point. He was kind of like, oh, okay. I, I just got myself a big advantage on this hole because uh, I reached the green, I hit three iron. Phil hits four iron, comes up into the into the bunker a little left of the green, the sandy area, and it's this is my advantage. It's my turn. We just to call them take... bunkers. Yeah, no. Yeah. All right. I'm I'm in. He <laughs> one, into the one bunker. One week. One week every nine years, you have to say sandy area. <laughs> it's preposterous. It's a bunker. Well, th- we can thank DJ for this. Yeah. Yeah. No um, kidding. Seriously. Did this, you see, that, did that's you see why... the... The no ain't up tweet about it. Hey, I think DJ is going to get a penalty even though he missed the cut. (laughs) (laughs) That's so good. So from the Sandy area, he uh, he holds it, and all of a sudden it it changes everything. It, it's not no longer can can Brooks take kind of a slow stranglehold on the event. Now it's okay. I I have to make this, and now uh, it, it turns into a real. Now he's really engaged. Now there's really a battle going on, and now Phil has a little bit of a spark, a little momentum. And when Phil does something like that, it can help with the focus. It can help with the confidence because you get engaged and all of a sudden you're in the heat of competition and there's a lot to focus on and you're really in it. And when players, and I think Brooks at some point during this event got a little lost with his focus because he started, it started to get out of touch from Phil, but that, that bunker shot really flipped the switch from, uh, from Brooks having control to Phil having control. I just, do you think like, Okay, here's a weird scenario. We we talked about how do you think Colin Markawa wins the PGA in August if there's fans there? Right? That was that was kind of a question they got asked around yeah. that time. Yeah. I think the same question could be asked about this tournament with Phil. Do you think Phil wins the tournament if there's fans there? Because I don't think that anybody was I don't know that people are rooting against Brooks. I, I don't think he's somebody that you like it would be weird, I think, to root against him, but I don't think people are re- really rooting for him either. It felt very much like, let's get Phil to the house. Let's let's get Phil in yeah. at six, you know, whatever. And I think it's a I think it's a great what if is is what if fans weren't allowed at this event? I honestly don't think Phil wins. He was very he, clearly probably not even off in the conversation. That. Yeah, right. he was, yeah, he, he was he, feeding I, off it. And I, and I think the other thing that so two two other things that was that were just fascinating to kind of uh, watch him in one he he's always like talking and gesticulating and like doing all this stuff with his playing partner he didn't talk at all right the only the only time he talked was with his uh, with with Tim with his caddy his brother when they were talking about a shot that's it the rest of the time every time they cut to him it was just nothing like he was just silent which was 
kind of jarring when it's Phil. You're like, is, is he okay? Like, is something wrong? And then the, the conversations with his caddy, with Tim, I just couldn't get enough of. I mean, he's talking about like holding off a Pell's nine and doing like just all these like just super stupid <laughs> and nerdy conversations. I, I I loved it. I thought it was I thought it was a really cool look into the mind of a of a six time major winner. I he like takes that they both different level. They both had uh, range finders, which like. Do, do you both need one? You don't trust what your caddy is going to shoot with the laser. I mean, you don't even use one on a regular basis. Why would, why would you both need one? I like that. They're both out there double barrel knees, but Greg, as, uh, <laughs> as, <barrel. laughs> as with any Phil Mickelson rounds, uh, there was certainly a bit more drama at the end than maybe he would have liked the ball on 13 is approach on 13, which trickles into the water, but he can drop it basically on the green. He makes bogey there. 14 is the par three. He makes bogey there. And then he draws, uh, uh he gets a really hard bounce on 17. It's a great shot in 17, probably exactly on the line. He's looking at gets a horrible bounce. It gets absolutely buried into this super awkward lie. And that was once he was able to just play that shot safely back towards the water that it, it took that long, even though he had a multiple shot lead for a, a lot of this for me to be like, okay, th like this is now over. <laughs> well, man, I, I don't even know. I was on 18 when, when this is over, I was on <laughs> when 18. it dropped when 18 dropped. No, when he hit the, when he hit the second shot, I said, this is over. I mean, there was a lot where I said, he's going to get this done. He's not going to let something happen again. A couple advantages that he had one Phil misses left typically when he misses. And, and if you look at those closing stretches where the left misses is not the big problem. So 17, if you miss left with the right hole location, you can, you have a little bit of green to work with. And for Phil, he can make four. So he, he, it's not really a double bogey hole at, at that point where for a right-handed player, it may be a double bogey hole. Um, and then on 18 left off the tee, you have basically a, um, a, a free release. Eternity. The more left you make, it's a free. You have the world because if you hit it into the tent like you did at Winged Foot, you're getting relief from yeah. that. So you, there's a limit to how far left you could hit it. it I love that he he club twirled what a ball that could have banged off the hospitality. <laughs> <laughs> but that tells you where he wants to hit it. He's got that oh, for sure. If I aim up the left edge of the hole and I miss left. I, I can't miss I can't miss left. It's like there's a wall. It's like a video game glitch where it'll bounce back into play. So anyway, I, I think those things really worked in his favor where his biggest miss was not the miss that would penalize a player. And I noticed that in 2012 as well. Rory missed left a lot in that uh, in his final round and was fine. That's where I mean, there he had to hit some great shots. It's not like it's easy from there, but the disaster tends to be on the right-hand side on that second nine. So I, I think that really uh, helped him. But I still, despite all of that, I, I didn't feel confident until his ball was on the 18th green. Well, I, I thought the uh, I thought the s scariest shot he had was um, maybe the second on 17, right? Out of this weird lie, back toward the water. Definitely. He, I mean, he, he wasn't going to get it within 20 yards of the water, the way he hit yeah. it. But it it was it it felt like a little bit of a problem. Uh, he had so many memorable shots this week. The putt on nine on Friday, the chip on eighteen on Saturday was mm -hmm. a joke. That that shot, I would have bladed that into the Atlantic Ocean, <laughs> right? Like the lie that he had. I mean, you don't want me hitting any of those shots, but it was just. Uh, he he flushed it all week. He, I mean, even some of the approach. I never felt like when he was on. When guys are on seventeen, you're like, I this is this is crazy. Like this is such a hard shot. And I didn't really feel that with him this week. Um, it just felt like he was flushing it. And it's just so like again, it's so improbable. He shot seventy five, seventy six, seventy six at Quell Hollow. That was his last tournament that he played in. And then he goes out and does this. I, I don't. I don't know. There's something. I, I. I will never not believe that there's something like deep inside you that that he has that that Kevin Streelman doesn't have. Right. He also has a lot more shots than Kevin Streelman, uh, and is a better ball striker than Kevin Streelman. But there's something in there that you just. You, you have to dig out uh, at 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 some point when you're 50 years old that just other guys they they don't have it.
Statistically, you led the field in strokes gain T to green for the week and then added one more on the putting surfaces to get it done. Uh, the biggest disappointment of the Sunday has to be the big game hunter, Brooks Kepka, Greg, who came up pretty weak here. I mean, it took him like... 13 holes to get the driver figured out. He finally applied the tiniest bit of pressure by birdieing 15 and 16, but for I, the majority of Sunday, Brooks was not a factor. No, and um, I noticed with Brooks, when he is a factor, he hits fades. And today, he wanted to hit a fade, and it wasn't fading. And it took him a really long time to adjust to that and stop trying to hit a fade everything that he missed was left and it wasn't a hook it just it, it was a ball that started left and stayed there started left and stayed there and it just wasn't moving to the right and when he won at bell reeve when he won at beth page when he won um at aaron hills i don't remember quite as clearly but at shinnecock those three majors that he won he could stand up there aim down the left hand side of anything and hit a fade into the fairway or to the right hand side and it was always okay um and and today it just wasn't happening so i i think he lost something in his swing a little bit and then um he also missed a couple of really important putts to the right and on on 10 and i think it was 11 those those back-to-back -back holes or it might have been a couple of holes later when he missed a really short one to the right um and and those two holes to me were when he really felt like he had to, like he was getting away. He had to have it to just keep his head above water. And he, and where Phil loses focus at times when Brooks isn't winning, it doesn't feel like he has a chance to win. I, I think he can kind of lose focus a little bit. He, he needs to have that trophy and reach for him to really grind it out and put a great round together where like John Rahm, doesn't if John Rom can't win, he can he can put together seventy two holes. He can he can finish around without a chance to win and does it as well as anybody. Um, and I think Brooks has a little bit of a more challenging time with that. Uh, by the way, John Rom's T eight was I did, I honestly I, you you could have given me any number that he finished this week and I would have believed you. I had no idea he was in the top ten, which he yeah. seems to kind he of did do it a again. Lot. He does it There's all the time. Matt Kuchar esque is what that was. Just backdoor yeah. yourself into a top 10. Uh, Brooks Kepka this week or this this Sunday, KP, you know, we talk about the drive, we talk about the missed putts. Uh, where it really rears its ugly head is the par fives. You, you cannot mm -hmm. play your first three par fives in four over uh, anywhere, especially when those are really the only ones giving up score, scoring opportunities at the ocean course. And, and a guy like Brooks Kepka, who usually just dismantles those holes. Um, I mean, that's 10 and 11 is where this thing got away from him. He was, he was lousy. I mean, he was just not good on Sunday and listen, like first three rounds to put yourself in that position are super impressive, like really, really good. But with the way he kind of talks, and again, just the bravado and like, hey, I'm, it's a major, I'm, this is my, t you know, all this stuff. It's like, it was just a bad performance. And, you know, whatever, like that happens. But I, I just, I, sometimes I don't love with the way his perform, his actual performances, especially of late, have matched up with kind of the way he talks about things. It's like, just lighten up, dude. Like, you don't have to, like you're not the I, I don't know it's just it's weird right am I am I alone in this like do, have you guys had that thought when you're listening to him like even he was talking to Amanda Balionis on uh Saturday night and just the, even the way he was talking it's like has ah, worst putting round of all time <laughs> okay like what what is that what is what, what does that even mean you know like is is there anything to I don't know I just I, I think it gets old kind of what do you think, Rick? Uh, I'm pretty much on record being like, I think his whole sh shtick, I don't know what to call it, where it's like only major championships matter. I think it is a defense mechanism for not winning as many regular PGA Tour events as he should. And like, it's a really, like, 
I'm just going to start saying that things that I'm I'm failing at, um, I, I don't care about either, right? Like if you don't win enough PGA Tour events, you just say you only care about the majors. Now, the, the problem with my take, Greg, is that if you keep winning majors, it doesn't matter, which he continues to do. He's got four in 28 career major starts, but at least in the last two PGA championships, uh, he has come up very lame on Sundays uh, when he was in contention to, to hoist another. I know it's not easy, but like... It, this this idea of only winning majors matters is a hard is a hard thing to continue to say. Um, so there's a couple of very it, it's a very peculiar case. So I can't I, I can't um, you know hold it against you. I can't hold any takes. I understand all your takes, and they're they're pretty good. Um, what I've seen with Brooks Kepka is one. The only I only practice for majors thing. Like, it, there's one of two ways that can go because I I've I've seen him. I I worked the, the range at his at the club. He practiced that, and he was on the range more than any other tour pro. That yeah, was there. of course. Right. He he worked at it harder so than why, a why lot of guys would go say play. That? Why doesn't he just yeah. say I'm working I, my ass well, off? So here's the that's, here's the that's thing. my point. That's my yeah. entire point. Go ahead, Greg. I Kyle, that's an option. It's one of two options, and I I think that's what it is. I, I think he just doesn't want to. He's too cool for school, right? He says, "Hey, I'm I'm only practicing for majors." It's not it's not true. He grinds. I've seen him grind. But um, the other option, when when this happened, when I saw him, he had basically was just starting to win. So he won the one made. He won at Aaron Hills, and in eighteen, he had won. Um, he had won or actually he hadn't he had only won at Aaron Hills. He hadn't even played Shinnecock yet by the time I was gone. So I only saw him after winning one major. So it's either what you, what we've just said where he's kind of not telling us the truth or the success that he's had changed him. And that's a concerning one for me. If he gets on a hot streak and wins four majors and all of a sudden he his mindset changes from the challenge tour player uh, or, or the kid on the range who throws a fit when his parents come to pick him up, it, the challenge tour guy who's playing 30 weeks in a row just to get a chance, right? He's fighting and clawing because he cares so much. And now all of a sudden he gets success and he flips the switch and doesn't care and only cares about certain events. If if that's really what hap- what's happening, then there's something very concerning going on and, and it leads to these Sunday performances because he's not in the form that he was in 2017. He's not putting the work in that he did in 17 and 18 that led to the success that he had. And that's where I, I don't know what to believe. And that's why I get annoyed, like you said, Kyle, because I don't know what to believe. Yeah. Is he really I, saying that? Because it's concerning if he's saying, I only practice for majors. Because that's not what he did before winning them. <laughs> it's not if true. that's what he's doing now, he's not going to win anymore. Or it's just not yeah. true. And that's just annoying. Yeah. Yeah. I think... I think I think he's really interesting. I think he's a little bit I think there's a I think there's a scenario. I think there's a world in which he's actually a very likable champion. I mean, he's a great champion, right? To go out and win four majors by age 30 or 29 or whatever he was. I mean, that is it, It's a it's, great story. It's incredible. Like it's so so good. But you don't like you don't have to do the like I'm above all this song and dance thing. Like for me to, I don't even know like why he really does it. It's, it's, it's really, it's really odd. And you don't have to like, I don't know, man, you don't have to be speed and let me in to every emotional detail or anything like that. But he just, I feel like he acts the way he, envi- he thinks that he should act or, and talks the way that he thinks that a champion should talk instead of just being a human being. And Maybe you can pin that on Tiger because Tiger was kind of always like robotic a, a little bit like that. But I, like if he was just a, just talked and acted like a human, I think he would be incredibly likable because he's such a great champion. And some people like him a ton because he's like this. Mm-hmm. But I think to the broader masses, and not that he's trying to kind of pander to everybody, but I think to the broader masses, it's a little bit of a turnoff. I think it kind of turns people away a little bit. Even I- Tiger gave way more than he does. Like he he I'm, let you in more. Even he, he would be, he at least gave you some a little bit of person. Hey, I I played well. You felt like Tiger was being truthful for the most part. Um, at least with his on the golf course stuff. I never felt like why well, it, it never didn't make sense. It felt very natural 
Tiger felt like it was it was real what he was saying. He was just very private or uh, kind of gave you some standard answers, but they never m- were misleading. Where sometimes with Brooks, they feel like they they guide you to th- they, they make you think it's something completely different than what it really is. I, I don't know if that makes any sense. I, I find I, it I also- in- incredibly incredibly interesting like i i i want i want to see like a docu like i don't know like i don't know if this is really how he is or this is what he wants to be but i find it incredibly intriguing well i think it's also like really com- and uh, i heard uh, chris solomon at no lane up talking about this on saturday night i think it's really commendable like it's big time stuff to put yourself in the position that you put yourself in yeah, to, to be top four at, at the PGA four straight years at, at, after fifty four holes, he has played joke. twenty. He has played twenty eight majors and top ten half of them. It's a it, joke. It, it's, it's ridiculous. So, it, and he's been and, hurt. And, and if you putt like if you're not putting with a croquet mallet on Sunday at at uh, you know at at Kiowa, maybe you maybe you win your fifth. Like he, part of it is like hey, he just had a bad day putting, but. Uh, I I don't know. I I think his I think he could do what he does without it coming across the way that it comes across. And that's kind of my whole point with him because I think he's a I think he's an unbelievable champion and I hope that that gets I hope that he allows people to kind of celebrate that in a way that is fun, kind of the way Phil has, right? Like Phil we're the the, the great trick that Phil has pulled on on everybody is that like he like he's led us into his life and we're kind of like, you're not boys with Phil. Like <laughs> Phil, Phil lives in a, in a tax bracket and in a world that you will <laughs> never be in that I will never be in. Right. But he, it, the, the, his like great marketing thing is that he's kind of allowed, like he's pulled back the curtain just enough to let you in and make you think that you are. And not that like, not that that's your job, but it, it a little bit is in that you're an entertainer and Again, just it comes back to just being a human being. One well, point nine. Take, oh, so I'm sorry. I was Go just ahead. gonna say one point nine million bucks to Phil Mickelson this week, but he will make a lot more off of the coffee sales and everything else that comes with this victory. Uh, let's let's go to Louis Ustason because he was really, I think, Greg, maybe the one guy who at least hung around long enough. If he could have made a putt at any point over the course of the week, uh, maybe we're talking about him ending a streak of 3,962 days since his major title, his only victory on the PGA Tour, his only victory on American soil, the 2010 Open Championship, but he just could not, he could not sniff a putt all week long. And, and yeah, I, I think that's um, true. He missed a couple of short ones and some didn't fall. But he also, there, there's a very clear miss with him, um, uh, especially, I think it, I noticed it on the greens. I didn't pay as much attention on the greens to it, but he misses to the right. He misses everything to the right. Uh, I saw at least three putts today that he missed to the right. And you have to take into account break. I don't know if that was an underread or an overread, but they were to the right. And then you see his tee shots and he misses to the right. Don't forget about what happened at the Zurich Classic in the playoff to the right. And he hits a lot of tee shots and a lot of iron shots that he loses to the right hand side. Um, and that's not what we saw at St. Andrews when he won by seven. That, w- uh, that was a complete stripe show. So it, I think if he gets that ironed out, um, it, that ironed out alone, he can really be a factor it, come Torrey Pines, Royal St. George's. He can be a factor again because he knows how to score. And he's, he really seems to, on difficult golf courses, get a lot out of his rounds. And I think a lot of it has to do with the fact that he's so good around the greens. Um, and he's also, he is a really good putter. I, I know he didn't putt great this weekend, but he's a, he's a really good putter. What do we make of Louis KP? Uh, 49th major championship we just witnessed. He's got nine top tens, obviously the one victory. Doesn't play often, at least not in recent years, but when he does, tends to play well. I mean, I I just, I don't know what to make of this guy. He does get a little bit of a pass, doesn't he? I I don't know why. I think, I think when you win an open at St. Andrews early in your career, I think you are given this sort of, um, it's like not being able to complain about your team winning a, a, a title, you know, like if you have to wait the, like 30 yeah. years before you can complain again. Yeah. There's a grace period. And I think, I think Louie got a grace period that like there's a difference in, in his and Tony Finau's career there. I'm, 
Mm. One of them won Puerto. Like I tweeted out, and I, I just wanted to stir people up. Like Tony Finau and Louis have the same number of PGA Tour wins, which <laughs> uh, is technically true, but also they could not be more different, right? right. Tony won yeah. Port, Puerto Rico, and and Louis won an Open Championship. I don't know, man. It, it's it's uh, it's a little bit the Ricky thing of like, man, if one swing goes differently. Like, are we saying anything if Louis wins the 12 Masters or the 15 Open at St. Andrews? One swing. Are, are One we swing. really saying it? Are we saying anything now? I mean, really, Louis. Are we saying Louis anything is, at all? <laughs> are, are we talking? Are we, are we saying anything negative against Louis? Because to me, he uh, Louis is an overachiever, right? I don't look at him as a guy who can't win. I mean, I may not. Uh, you know, betting outright on him because I don't think he's going to win, but I don't think he takes heat for not winning. I, Louis, well, what does it mean to overachieve? Should it he? What, 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 or, is that, what does that mean to you? Or shouldn't he? Or well, should he has, take it heat for not It has to do winning. with your starting expectations. Well, that's a different question, Rick. But it feels <laughs> it feels like Louis's um, mission in life is not to win majors, which is this, this is, and the, the, it's all about what are your expectations? What are our expectations based on the way you talk? Right. right. Yes. Louis. Louis never said, "Hey, it's all about majors." It's all, Rory's said that. I mean, he hasn't said those words, but he's implied that. Spieth has talked about that. Right. JT's talked yeah. about that. Brooks talks about that all the time. But Louis's like, "Hey, I just want to go farm." And so we're like, "Oh, cool." Louis's in the mix this week, and we don't care. Yeah. Whether it's he wins, because we don't have any expectations to hold him up against. Right. There's right. no background to kind of to kind of to draw him on, and I think that that is. I think that's a really good point by you because the way that guys talk about majors is the standard that we hold them to when those majors are played. And even even Tony Finau has said, I want to be the best player in the world. So we have a way of saying, okay, he wants to be the he wants to be the best player in the world. So why is he not being the best? Why is he not achieving his goal? Or uh, uh, there's also a uh, element of this. Well, what's his talent level, and is he living living up to his talent level? Do we look at Louis Oosthuizen as a guy that's going to be regularly contending in major championships and big events? I don't think so. So when he does, it oh, there's Louis again. He plays great in majors, but can he win? No, we we don't cross that line. We don't cross the line of is this the time when Louis can win? Xander Shoffley comes out as a young star, contends in majors right away. So what's the next step? Well, oh, the next step is he's going to win one. But we feel like Louis, he he overachieved, and it doesn't. We feel like it doesn't matter. Well, it's all, and I'm sure to him. him it does matter. So yeah. uh, it's it's very peculiar. I, I was thinking about Tony Finau today because Phil uh, shot a one over seventy three and one, and I was thinking, man, Tony Finau would have loved to have shot one over and one. I mean, the guy would shoot like four or five under on Sunday and someone would steal it from him. And I feel so bad. Um, all right, gentlemen, here's what we got to do. We've got, uh, we're going to do odds and ends at the end. There are other guys we need to talk about, but first we're going to take a quick break and hear a word from our sponsors. And we're back. Uh, let me introduce you to Will Zalatoris, uh, who has now played three major championships as a professional. T6 at the U.S. Open, solo second at the Masters, and a T8 here at, I can I always want to say winged foot, at the Ocean Course, Kiowa Island. Uh, Greg, that is pretty, pretty good, my friend. Um, yeah, it, it's like like we were saying, John Rom. you feel like you have no idea where he finished this week. I kind of feel <laughs> the same way with Will Zalatoris. I saw him hit some shots early in the week. I didn't see a lot of him over the weekend. Uh, and and he just continues to do what he does, and it 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 works. Um, and so he falls now into the category of if if this continues, if this great play in majors continues for him, and he doesn't win in say, he may have a you know three or four year grace period. The conversation about Will Zalatoris will be why isn't he winning? If he doesn't, um, it will not be wow this guy is doing unbelievable things contending in big events. It will be, why hasn't he won? And so he's in that category. About eight months ago, KP, we were talking about Will Zalatoris and we said, you know, there's a lot of people who think he might be a top 25 player in the world. 
right now. That's a statement that that happened on this podcast. Well, he's going to wake up tomorrow morning as the 27th ranked player in the world. Also, not a PGA Tour member for the rest of the year. Will not be playing uh, in the playoffs unless he wins a golf tournament. Also insane. But this is like this kid's legit. Yeah, he's awesome. And I I think here here's what I think about when I think about him. And maybe I shouldn't, but I always think about the Ryder Cup. And I think we have a really interesting Ryder Cup situation now because <laughs> Bill's going to be on the team. I don't got, got a lot of points. I don't think you. W- I don't. I I think it would be historically unprecedented to win a major in the summer of the Ryder Cup year and not be on the team. I think you got to go to back to uh, 2002, at least for a PGA Championship. How did you pull that off so quickly? Who was it? Beam? Yeah, Rich Beam. Mm. So he wins. Think think about it. Rich Beam wins in August. I looked this up earlier. That's why. I mean, I'm not an encyclopedia here. I I actually had this thought. Like, has anybody won a PGA uh, and not? I didn't. I didn't look for the other majors. Um, but yeah, that's a Rich good, that's a so much yeah, for that. I, I mean, but it, but seriously. <laughs> Rich Beam won a PGA in two th- in August. Now this is a, this is May. So, uh, sorry, Kyle. So that take that so, take lasted the shortest golf floor take lasted three seconds. <laughs> <laughs> what I was gonna say is that it would be crazy if Phil wasn't on the team, which is gonna boot somebody like Zalatoris off the team, right? There's gonna be there's yeah. gonna be like two. I think there's gonna be two or three guys this year that you're like, can we have? Reserves. Scotty Can we have Shuffler. extras? Can Scotty Scheffler be on the team? Yeah. So I think, he got, I think he got. I think he got um 4,600 points for that win. So quick mental math, it puts him around 6,800. So it's probably gonna bump him to like number 14 on the Ryder Cup list anyway. And then you have the whole thing with like, hey, he just won a major, and it's Phil Mickelson. And he's great for the clubhouse and all that stuff. So he's almost certainly on the team. He's and, great for the, the clubhouse uh, to the tune of like 10 <laughs> losses at the Ryder Cup in his career. Uh, well, <laughs> you know, it's relative. <laughs> <laughs> I also, I, I kind of think Brooks Kepka. I know he's way up in the list, but there were some questions as I've looked at this earlier in the year when he got hurt again. Is Brooks going to be healthy enough to play the Ryder Cup? And he's this week kind of proved it. So I, I almost feel like two picks, two potential picks for Steve Stricker got wiped away this week. Um, I can't believe we're talking like Kep- about this right now. Yeah, we always yeah, do great. this after a major. We have to yeah, have to talk about the Ryder Cup. It's like real quick on Salatoris. He is a his iron play is just it's Joker. incredible. I mean, it's it a feels joke. a it feels a little like the way that we thought about Morikawa this time last year, right? Before he had won a major, he he had already won once, and then he won uh, I think once. And then he won work day, and then he won the mate. You know, he kind of took off. But <clears throat> Zalator, I, you could tie me into Zalatoris being a top five iron player on tour. JT Morikawa, Spieth, Zalatoris, you could maybe throw in there. And he stripes it. He is. He flushes it. It's so fun to watch, and I love it. it just his ball fight. He's he's fun. Uh, you know, I think I think people look at him, and it's a little bit of the Steph Curry thing, where you're like, him, really, right? <laughs> We do that with speed too. It's like him, and you're like, yeah, him. He's he's the real deal, and he's going to be a ton of fun. I'm I'm excited about the next few years with him. Do you think he has the putting? The uh, the the is the putting a concern for you? I mean, there's been a lot of videos of him and having uh, you know yip issues, and he's kind of going to a, a workaround for that with the arm lock and the claw. Is there a difference? Because Morikawa is not a great putter either, so it's an interesting parallel. Do you think Zalatoris is a more extreme case than Morikawa was? Uh, I mean, Morikawa is a kind of a bad putter, right? Yeah, but he has great putting weeks uh, upon occasion, right? He's I had think enough. That's, I think Can that's do been, that too. I've been thinking about this a lot. Like, I, guys, we all we hear from them is, "Hey, I want to be more consistent. I want to be more consistent." And it's like, no, you actually don't you want more volatility right Right. you want to have the great putting weeks that greg is talking about and so i think that is probably in there because i don't think you have the pedigree that he has without having that in there 
Um, yeah. But I, I would love to see it. I would actually love to see more inconsistency from from somebody like a Zalatoris. He, yeah, Morikawa can lose uh, seven strokes putting in a week, but that's okay because he can gain seven. And the weeks that he gains seven, if he does that three times a year, he's going to win three times a year. Zalatoris, since his debut, since the U.S. Open, he is one, two, three, four, five, sixth, the sixth best strokes gained approach player since he debuted. And that does not include this week, so he will probably jump to like nah fourth ish right there top five iron player in the world right there with spieth morikawa and jt hey it was a big it was a big week for team no putt right top the top 10 uh guys on the leaderboard i don't think any of them were in the top 10 in putting paul casey sighting yeah baby yeah big 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 thank you very much all right we'll go quick on these ones uh ricky fowler top 10 baby let's go uh we got Jacob. <laughs> I love that. That's Jacob, my favorite one. Jacob's getting excited back there. <laughs> uh, can, I, can, I, can, I, can I go on Ricky? Please. <laughs> so Ricky hasn't been good. Ricky, how, Ricky, Patrick Harrington, and Phil contending at this major. Yeah. What? A, what? It's, a, this, it's an we, open championship. Why do we even make picks? Like, what's the point? I don't know. So we I want to talk about that after later. <laughs> I want to talk about that after you. So I thought it was really cool that Ricky, who I made a joke about being a detective on Thursday, finished in the top. I think he finished in the top 10, right? I think he was T9, T8. Yeah, T8. Mm -hmm. I thought it was cool that he did that with Spieth on Sunday because who knows better what the woods look like than Jordan Spieth. Yeah. Right? <laughs> and so I don't, who knows if they talked about that? I have no idea. But <laughs> – Golf is we we make fun of the whole like PJ Tour Live and like the whole just all the stuff. But golf is better when Ricky's playing well because more people are interested in it and it's and it's it's more fun than when he's not playing well. So I thought it was I thought it was cool to see him kind of get I don't know if he righted the ship. Uh, I don't know if he's gonna start being top twenty five player in the world type guy again going forward, but it was cool to see him play well this week. Um, so I wanted to say something, uh, and I'm, I, I was looking at something and I forgot what I, where I was going. What we were just talking so, about Ricky Fowler. Why do we make picks? Also, Ricky. Oh, Fowler, why do we make picks? Why I do we make picks? Yeah yeah, yeah. 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 All right. So I'm looking at this board and my, my look going in here was, all right, this is going to be amongst the most difficult T to green courses that we've, that we see. And I think it was, I think it really was. So that takes ball striking and as good as you can be, it can really, it, it can still be a challenge for you. So I think short game, I'm walking through this short game is going to be really important this week. You're going to have to scramble. It's going to be tough um, to, to hit a lot of greens. So short game is going to be key. So I, I build my, my whole philosophy this week in terms of picks was on short game. And after day one, I was dead wrong. It was all like the the whole leaderboard yeah, it was, was like Corey the Connor, best ball strikers Paul in the Casey. world, like, right? Yeah. <laughs> I was and I was like, "What?" I'm well, I'm with way you. off. But here's but here's the point on that. Like, I think because I thought a little bit of the same stuff you did. I think it wasn't quite it wasn't windy enough for what you just like. It it wasn't quite windy enough for nobody to hit any greens. If yeah. it had been, then yes, Patrick Reed maybe wins this golf tournament or finishes in the top three or, or whatever. Right. But I thought that really – that like that point right there speaks to – I thought this was like a perfect major championship week. The right amount of wind, the right P, – the PGA of America, Kerry Haig, he's so good Brilliant. at setting up a golf course. We talked about this, Greg. We were texting about it, I think. Yeah. They do a great, great job. Even at a place like TPC Harding Park, even at a place like Bell Reef, that it's obviously a much easier course, but they set it up in a way it, it's just it's always fair. Like we never yeah. walk away from a PGA, and some of this is the USGA getting unfairly dragged, but we never walk away from a PGA and say, Well, that, that was dumb. That wasn't fair. Yeah. You know? We just don't I can't really... believe there's no complaints. There's no complaints going but on. But we also in... we also don't really talk about how it's too easy. You know, if we do, it's because Bell Reeve as a course, you can't you can't make it hard, right? And, and if so, you get soft conditions or something. Go ahead, Rick. Shout out to Mark Immelman who told us on Tuesday that he would take four seventy ones right now. That would have been four under. That. 
Yeah. Now it wouldn't have been good enough to win, but he Mark would have got himself a nice little T two with a four under. So he pretty much nailed it. That was yeah. a great call. I just I thought it was the right amount of win. It was the right setup. It's a course that I've made this point on HQ. I think this course it doesn't have the history that a Wingfoot has. It doesn't have the history that an Oakmont has. But I think as time goes on and there are more big time events played here, I think it's going to age really well. It's I think it's building gonna be, it. It's going to become a course that when you have an Epic Ryder Cup and you have Rory and Phil as your three events. I mean that's that's phenomenal. Yeah, and, and the history I just think, is building, and and it's and it's a course that like it's really long, but it doesn't give a disproportionate advantage to long hitters, right? Uh, Data Golf had a really good thing on this because there's these these forced um, these forced layups, so it doesn't. It's not just where Bryson can pull driver on every hole, so you got to be smart. I just think it was a, a great test in terms of major championship golf. Play and that's every why it's there. That's why it leads to the the diversity and styles of players on the leaderboard, right? This is what I was getting into with the t- with the picks. It wasn't necessarily all short game guys, but it wasn't all ball strikers either. It was just a like put put all the styles in a hat, shake it up, and see what comes out. You have the greatest short game player of all time win, but he also hits it great. You have Louis Oosthuizen, who's a leads the tour in strokes game putting. Brooks Kepka, who's a ball striker. Shane Lowry. I, I don't even know what I would classify him as. Podrick Harrington, you, I mean, you, he's a Ryder Cup captain. He's not. A, he shouldn't be coming in a top five in a major championship. Forty nine. Harry Higgs comes in tied fourth. This and, and then you have Paul Casey, great ball striker. You have Colin Morikawa and John Rahm and Will Zalatoris, and then uh, so some of these guys start to pile in behind. But the styles of play up top is. I don't know how you could pick that. I, I don't look back and say, I missed something this week. I was dead wrong. I did on Thursday. On Thursday, I thought I was dead wrong. But it, it played out to be that I, I think, I don't think there's anyone's model that, that could have played out this week and, and how really many, worked. How many greens did Phil hit? I mean, he, he just pounded greens. It was so imp- I mean, it was a, it was a clinic in. He had 46. I, mean, I thought he was, that's crazy. I thought he was. Yeah. He was unusually good off the tee, right? Because he's not he's not good off the tee. So that was a little bit out of character. It was way out of character for him. But it was a clinic in what it takes to be the best player in the world, which is hitting green after green from from the rough, from weird lies, from deep, from short. I mean, it was just an unbelievable clinic in the wind of pounding greens. And that's how you win yeah. a major. Speaking and he only pit- he still only hit 13 was the most he hit any day. And you're you're right. He did pound. Gr- That's how hard it was to the green. Rick, we we don't. Sorry, Rick. That's, okay. <laughs> That's yeah, like the. We're, we're just I, I I'm just trying to get Jacob not mad at me. That's all. I don't. I don't <laughs> care. I'll go for another hour. I'm just you know. I don't want Jacob upset with me. Uh, speaking of picks. Greg, you had a pretty good week. I mean, you, you you said, oh, I don't know what my picks were. Well, you made money. Actually, both of you did uh, in our little betting contest. Greg, you had Patrick Reed over Webb Simpson. Cash that. And then your your big one here, your plus 190, Louis Ustazen over Patrick Cantlay and Joaquin Neiman. Cash it. Ooh, I got dicey. Yeah. Yeah, yeah that <laughs> did get dicey. Wow. Uh, I... I um. No, yeah, I'm happy about that. I mean, that's better than I thought. I, I wasn't necessarily following that card in that like uh, as tightly as I guess I should have been. I felt like I kind of was losing for the week. So that's a pleasant surprise. What did KP? I do? Okay, well, hold hold your pants on. I got it right here. You're second Will, for a reason. Hold your pants. Oh, I, I, I have actually, no idea. I actually think he's first. I might have lost hundred dollars. <laughs> he was actually first. No, I, I mean second in the order. Like, right, you go to me uh, first. Okay. Uh, yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Right. Exactly. Save the best for last. Uh, Kyle, uh, you won with Zalatoris as your top ten. That was plus one seventy five. Charlie oh, Hoffman, the arrow. off plus 450 for a top 20 and then Jordan nice. Spieth minus 110 over Dustin Johnson your best bet and then you also got uh I I think I'm reading Jacob's notes correctly here a, a dead heat have for Keegan plus 170 in a three ball over Sung Jay and Adam Scott because he must have tied with oh he tied with Sung Jay so you got God, dead heat Keegan Keegan flushed it all week him and Spieth were the guys that on Saturday, it was like, how are these guys only even par? They should have been at least two or three under. Yep. Keegan, 
Yeah, Keegan gained nine point two five from Teeter. He's still, dude. He's still Keegan's gonna win. He he only yeah, lost he's a, ready. less than a stroke and a half on the greens. He is in contention a lot. He's gonna win soon. I agree. Yeah, I I agree as well. Feels like a like maybe a memorial or something. Ooh. That, yeah, you I guys might have like to steal that, that one. Yeah, I might yeah. have to steal that. I'm gonna forget <laughs> it in like three minutes, but <laughs> man, what a what a what a fun week. Like I think we've all done this for a long time. I, I don't know what my favorite major to cover ever is, but this one's up there. And you you're doing it from home, you're watching twelve hours of golf a day, but it's still just it's so fun to talk about and to tweet about and think about and write about it's just it's the best I, uh, do you guys have a favorite major that you've covered well my favorite tweets to read were yours this week i mean i just got you got a response out of phil you got a response out of phil mickelson i mean yeah, that phil was phil tweeting about crypto to me on thursday and yeah, then winning he, the pga on yeah, sunday he tweeted at you i mean that is that that's pretty cool so um great job kp does phil follow uh, you yeah wow no big deal yeah, you know, okay. be careful. Yeah. Be careful. Yeah, careful. I, know, I, I do. Have to, I do. I had to stay away from some different topics this week <laughs> and always. Um, before, well, I, I want to come back to other things that were fun this week. But before, before we do, I'll give you a quick one and done update. You dorks are letting me just hang out and do nothing. I had a miscut from Brian Harmon, and you guys made up zero ground on me. Mark had Schwartzel who missed the cut. KP, you had Daniel Berger, T75. Greg had Rory, T49. Jacob had Spieth, T30. And Coach had Rory, T49. I'm actually happy with the T75 out of DB after he shot a 79 in the first round. Yeah, <laughs> that's true. He got you like 15,000 more than you thought he was going to get you. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Yes. So, well, um, no change in the one and done. Yeah. Yeah. That was so disappointing. I'm just so, uh, I, I, well, again, like Phil, Padraig Harrington, and Ricky. Right. Who do you, who do you pick? Who do you take? Well, <laughs> yeah. yeah who's the one it? and done play up there like is there so, a is there... you know i i think i think actually maybe it it might have been rom like just as a did anybody yeah take rom? all right no yeah. nobody took rom rom would have been a good one yeah. it's not could... brooks though rick it's not brooks no, you can't take brooks no. that's a what about what about morikawa could you have taken morikawa yeah yeah, yeah. But I, I thought the golf course was a little too big for him honestly which is but crazy because phil it turned... uh, like it turned out to really not be. Yeah, it didn't play seventy seven hundred yards. No, it played like no. seventy three hundred or I don't know seventy four hundred. Scheffler would have been a good play too. Yeah. Man, um, anyway, I I can't believe this was all this week. E EVR destroyed a a, oh a my box. Um, f the Phil Crypto thing that was all this week. There was so Did much you stuff. See, that uh, yeah. Did you see Stinson break a club on Sunday? Quietly. He just quietly. It was very like, it was kind of like creepy the way that he did it because it was like, <laughs> it, it was, I, it was like yeah. some, it was like somebody who gets paid to do stuff like that. Just, it, it doesn't take yeah. a lot of effort for me to break He's a club. He's a club assassin. You um, just do your you, business. And <laughs> did you think for a moment, did you think for a moment that when the crowd was getting uh, a little raucous walking up 18, that someone was going to run out and steal the ball out of the cup like we've been tweeting those around all week? I tweeted uh, it. That tweet's unbelievable. Un I cannot get enough. If there is an archive of those, send them to me uh, yes. because I cannot get enough of these. And it's, and it's so natural for the – like yeah. who is the guy who, who made it? They all do it. it. <laughs> it's like they, it goes in and they just – they wait for it. Like everybody's <laughs> – <laughs> Fumble! <laughs> it feels like a torn ACL waiting to happen. Oh, it feels like Brooks's career would end if that happened. <laughs> and the cops are just waiting there to like pull people off the pile. Like it's yeah. amazing. I, I would yeah, change. There it we're, is. Showing it, we're showing it on YouTube right now. Like imagine getting chopped Look at that. By, right really there. Just go to shake hands. Just shake hands. If, yeah. if Spieth was leading on Saturday night, I might have flown to Kiowa and tried to do this. <laughs> if, if I would have known what the situation was. Uh, I mean, they, they were going to let everybody. I, I legit thought this might happen. It looked, it looked like, it, like it had, for a while. They had no control. If, if someone tried to, they couldn't have stopped it. They had no control over what was happening there. It was it was so cool. It was how such much, a fun. Imagine. Okay. So like, I don't know what these events were. Imagine how, like, if you, does, is, that, is that somebody at home have that ball? Like, hey, <laughs> here's the ball that Sam Snead tapped in uh, at the 19 yeah. whatever. Like, 
I'll tell you I what. I bought it on eBay a... last year for four thousand six hundred and seventy-two dollars. <laughs> it doesn't have a Sungjae logo on it like yours do, right? So. <laughs> I do. Or maybe it does. does. Maybe it does. That would be something special. Uh, all right. Anything else before we get out of here? Uh, what's your favorite favorite major you've covered? Is this in the top three? I mean, I haven't been doing this nearly as long as you guys have, so this is certainly up there. Um, I think it has to be. I mean, this was this was not only okay. So, so I think in major championships, the course is always a, a huge storyline, and I thought yes. that this was awesome. I did not hear a negative word the entire time. I thought it not only played well, but I thought it looked good on television because even sometimes when the course plays well, people are like, "Oh, it looks purple." It, oh, it's too spotchy. Like whatever, right? Like it, there was zero complaints about the course. Uh, then you get uh, drama, which we had drama all week long, especially on Sunday. Then we got uh, not only a worthy champion, but one that is uh, essentially universally praised. So I don't know how this could not be on whatever short list you want to put it on. It's yeah. definitely, definitely on the list. I mean, you got Tiger in 19 is definitely on there. Um, I, I think it's, I think like Tiger in 19 and I saw producer Jacob just asked us if this was more impressive than, than Tiger's win in 19. I, it's hard to say. I, I think, I think the underrated part about Tiger's win in 19 is that he didn't, he didn't play as well as Phil did, I don't think. Um, the guys around him, and this happened a little on Sunday at Kiowa, but the guys around Tiger in 19 just kind of fell apart, and he kind of just he just did what he needed to do. He didn't really yeah. have to. But, I mean, you could say the same thing this week, don't you think, yeah. Kyle? I mean, ev nobody really made it. Nobody around <laughs> Phil played great. Right, but but here the difference I think was that Phil led after thirty six. Phil led after fifty four, and that's yeah. that's really hard. Like that's yeah. emotion. I thought emotionally it was more taxing this week because of because Kiel is a place that's kind of unfair. You know, like you get bad bounces and the wind is against you when it might have been for you early in the day. Like there's just a bunch of different stuff going on. So. I don't it's it's so hard to say which one was was more impressive but i thought the performance this week like the the start to end performance from phil was probably a little bit better tiger was in much better form leading into his yes. history first of all he was 12th in the world and he had won uh or he had he had finished runner-up at the pga championship in 18 he won the tour championship at the end of that year uh played made a deep run at the match play that was his last start before the masters and then he wins the masters. And then when you compare that with Phil's recent form, but also I think the historical, you know, the 50 plus thing, like uh, I think there's like 12 or 13 guys. It's a very short, maybe it's eight guys who have won on the PGA tour over 50, like any event. Then you throw in the fact that it's a major championship. Uh, and it's this one with the field that we had at this course. It's, it's gotta be more impressive. It would be different if it was Bell Reef, right? It would it would be different if it was a place that you're like, oh, Phil got hot with a putter this week and just, you know, he he kind of like it was kind of an easier course and it like to do it at Kiowa. Kiowa is a is a it, it's 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 almost like and you mentioned this earlier, Greg, it's almost like an open championship course that really yeah. crowns like kings, like great, great champions. Like a like a Muirfield or like a Burtdale where Palmer and Spieth and all these great champions have won. That's what Kiowa felt like. And so to do it there, you're like, oh my gosh. And I saw he said afterwards, he, he said, This might be my last one. I might go on a run. Who can say? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um it's before just, we it's the best. Before we get out of here, William Hill has updated their U.S. Open odds. Oh uh, gosh, I can't. I can't think about <laughs> more. I can't think about another major. Uh, who do you think the favorite is? Uh, probably Rom. John Rom. He, he is not. He's eleven to one. There's one mm. guy at ten to one. A little surprising, wow. I think. A ten to one. Um, yeah, I'm surprised. And, by and it's surprising to me. JT. I mean, we're, we're splitting hairs here, right? Uh, but, uh, Bryson. DJ. Oh. Yeah. Oh, wow, uh, DJ. Yeah. Okay. DJ ten to one. Rom at eleven. They, they which makes just, more you sense. don't care about DJ's recent form. You don't care. No, about it. and you they don't want to. Get, they don't want people betting it for the next three right. weeks or whatever. Because he could he could go out and win uh, at Congaree by twelve. <laughs> you know, he, he really might. he could. <laughs> Congaree by twelve. I think Bryson's going to win <laughs> the U.S. Open by. You got four. a couple hot takes here. 
Yeah, I think, well, he's I think Bryson, to one. I think Bryson wins Tory by four. I think so, it'll so be so far. We got Keegan winning at Memorial <laughs> by how many? Is well, that I don't a know. Just two, one, Who one knows? or two. Okay. I think so, I think Bryson Bryson on Friday night at Tory is going to be like six to one. So get the fourteen while you can. Uh, Phil is down to sixty six to one. That's a horrible bet at a U.S. <laughs> Open. Yeah. You should yeah, not. St- it's that. still a no for me. I mean, it's he, amazing he, he, that he proved me wrong, but it, it's a no. You can't say he's gonna. Like, you can't say that Phil was gonna win this week. You, you can't. <sighs> it, 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 you're, it's a it's a dart throw. I think I think the last five years have just been this long con by Phil to get his odds finally up to two hundred, <laughs> so that he could funnel some money in that direction and then pull off. This victory, you William think this Hill is had, part of his cryptocurrency <laughs> scheme. For William sure. Hill I had yes, uh, the PGA to pay him in like Dogecoin or something. <laughs> <laughs> William Hill had two bets of a uh, hundred to one at two hundred. Excuse me, a hundred dollars on two at two hundred to one for twenty grand. That was that. That was their big liabilities on Phil this week. Uh, wait, say that again. A hundred. Two, two different betters bet a hundred dollars on Phil at two hundred to one odds. So it was twenty thousand dollars were the payouts for those. I mean, wow, it's just that's it. It's yeah. a, it's a dumb bet. It is. It's a guess. It, it's a like, it, it's like going into the NCAA tournament and picking teams based on jersey color, right? It's okay. it's just, it's just so extreme because he's won forty four times, forty five now, and that's that's uh, where has, I'm, I'm just he has six majors, but he's he's fifty. He's not. This is like Jack winning in '86. He's not in form. You're not, ex- and this is not a course you would expect Phil to win on. So it still is blowing my mind. I know we're. But way- that's, I I'm with you. Like I totally agree. Like we, all, we you can't talk enough about how crazy it is that he didn't fade. I mean, how many HQ hits did we get asked on Rick? I know we've already talked about this. But I, I keep talking about it. Of like, I hey, was on. Win? Can Phil win? I, can Phil win? I was on uh, with four holes to go or five holes to go. And he was up three or whatever, four. And they were like, is it over? And I was like, uh, which is like, it's, yes, of course it's over. It should be over. It would be a historic monumental meltdown that we would play for 50 years if he doesn't win it. Of course it's yeah. over, but I still can't believe it. I know. I felt I felt like I got uh, baited into tweeting the Vince gif, by the way, because... <laughs> People were just people were just yelling at me about it, and I'm like, "This is a lot of pressure." Like, I don't. And then the next shot he hits, he yeah, he he hits this like held off the eight iron, and he just yanks it into the water. And I'm like, "What have I done? Like, what? what how's this gonna go?" And then he makes bogey at the next, and you're like, uh, "Kevin Van Valkenburg of ESPN was texting me. He's like, is Adam Scott at uh, where did he lose to Darren Clark? St. George's Royal Litham." With him, yeah, and it yeah. felt like because bogey, 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 and you're like, oh my gosh, like is it, is this gonna happen? It feels like but we're it, choking, but it, it, <laughs> it feels like we're collapsing, buddy. Yeah, collapsing. Uh, <laughs> but what righted the ship? It was driver, right? I know. I mean, it's it, crazy. He pounds driver on 15 and 16, and and the tournament's over, and you're like, this is uh, I, I don't know. It's just it was very and a very unusual way for Phil to get it done. There you go. It is officially Charles Schwab Challenge Week. Have at it. We'll be back on Monday. I, I, for, I can't. I can't do a tournament this week for, for a DFS preview on Monday with Greg and Sia Najad. Mega preview on Tuesday and all the good stuff after every single round. But for now, let me thank producer Jacob. He does all the hard work behind the scenes. Let me thank Greg Ducharme. You can find him at the real GFD. That's Kyle Porter who tweets with Phil Mickelson. You can find those <laughs> at Kyle Porter's CBS and you can find me at Rick run. Good. This has been the first cut and we'll get you next time.